So they bought into the company for $1.3 billion because the valuation of their shares continue to go up to $24 billion. Every two years, they make back what their initial investment was because the dividend payment that comes into them. They not, y'all not listening. Y'all not listening. That's a lot of money. They make $672 million by just being an investor in the company is what I'm trying to tell you. What I'm trying to tell you is that when you play for forever and you're making informed decisions, we don't care about what GameStop is doing. We don't care about what AMC is doing. We don't care about meme stocks at all. We don't care about day trading. We don't care about options trading. We don't care about giving our money away. We are making informed decisions on how we can continue to get to the bag. And this is a prime example. Now do it on a smaller scale, continue to scale it out and it grows exponentially. When I'm telling you that it snowballs, it snowballs. It's a reason why I was down for 10 years before I started spending any money because I had read this book and I understand how investments work. The king of long-term investor and long-term investing. My friend, I read a lot of his books. One of the first books that I read when I was in, uh, was it in college? I don't know. But I used to spend a lot of time in the library in my 20s. And one of the books that I really, 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 really started to get it. Look, someone is grinding on him. <laughs> Baby Blue in jail. Mm. One, of the, one of the things that I really, really loved and the first person that I fell in love with from an investor perspective is Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, ladies and gentlemen. And the reason why I'm coming to you with this article today and I'm having this conversation with you guys is because I'm trying to help you guys to understand how it is that you need to be investing your money. There's a difference between being a seasoned investor, which is making informed decisions and gambling. All of us is in the stock market, but some of us is moving a little bit differently than others. Okay. Warren Buffett has given me the blueprint that has helped me level up so much. If you have not already, I am going to put my pick of the week of the book that I am reading this week because in January, I spend my January rereading some of my favorite books of all time so that I can stay focused throughout the year. But my favorite investor of all time is Warren Buffett taught me the idea behind Buffettology, which is a book that was written about Warren Buffett's investment strategies. It was called Buffettology, and I swear by that book. I remember when you read it. You remember when I was reading it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to come home, and I used to swear by that book when we was getting, when we was getting up. But Buffettology is one of my favorite books of all time, but that's not going to be my pick. And if you want to be a part of the Patreon and go into the Discord and be able to get into the books and all of that, I created an entirely, entirely new thread of what it is that we're going to be reading. I'm posting my pick today. Um, make sure you join the Patreon. The link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. If you need to book me for a personal coaching call, go to AntonDaniels.com. I don't even know how much longer I'm going to promote that because I'm very, 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 very booked up when it comes to my schedule. So shout out to Tej Hanley. And Nicholas Virgil for holding me down. But long-term investing. Rita, what do you think before I get into this article about investing? Like, are you interested in it even remotely or anything like that? Or do you just feel like, you know what, Anton? You can take care of that and I'm cool. You know what, Anton? You can take care of that and I'm cool. Should I help them to <laughs> understand our conversation at length last night as we were laying and watching Eternals on... Uh, Disney Plus. So, this is what happened last night. Listen, we live our lives like an open. I didn't answer. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I got you. Me and Rita was chilling last night. We laying on a couch. We watching Eternals. And we got all the way up to the part, to a part that I didn't necessarily care for. And then I cut it off. I said, I'm going to finish it later. But we laying there. And, you know, I go on my phone because I get an alert. And I'm like, you know what? Let me check the account really quickly. So I checked the account and I'm like, honey, I just gave you a 25% raise. But the account, your personal account looks the exact same as it did before I gave you the 25% raise. And then I gave you the 33% raise before that. And I said, honey, why don't you save your money? Okay, well, well let's just hold on a second because. I do have a savings and I do. am saving my money. So but not at the rate that I think that you should. Okay, For as much money as you get paid that. and how much money you make, 
I said, Rita, why don't you save your money? And then you said. What did I say? <laughs> you don't even know what you said. You said, honey, you said, why should I save my money? <laughs> That's what you said. You said, why should I save my money? Okay. And your logic and your reasoning behind it was what? Well, because we have a savings account together that we no we don't have a savings account we got brokerage I mean, accounts yeah we have those i don't believe in savings accounts you got a savings account together I don't. and you're saving for the both of us i mean we both are saving <laughs> for the both of us. we both saving for the both of us you just yes. gonna keep it in my house yes and like I, debo i'm saving so let's not just say that i'm not but you save you to want do me what to save as much as you <laughs> saving to do what to spend make bigger purchases yeah but then you spend my money well not my money but you take the cards and you just buy bigger purchases anyway so what difference do it make that's not true honey honey here we go what i'm serious let's talk about money listen one of the things that we're going to talk about in a marriage series on sunday we're going to talk about money we're going to deep dive into money how it is that we manage our finances we're going to go all the way into this so i'm just giving them a preview of the different conversations that we have and how men play a role in a marriage and how women play a role in a marriage but you've largely right even though i've given you all of the passwords and i've said hey rita this is what you was to do this is what you do this is how much you live off of this is how much you need for the rest of your life we have that all documented out right mm -hmm. but just in a general sense when i pay you money mm -hmm. you kind of think of it like yo this is fun money yes but you don't have the mindset like, because you know that I stack so much cheese and I invest so much of our money and we got so many assets, you don't give a piss about that saving stuff, right? right. Do you think that that's a luxury of being a wife? Uh, yes. Why? Because if I was um, single, I wouldn't have that mentality. You don't think you would have that mentality? No. Honey. Uh, um, well, the only reason I, I say that is because why would you do anything differently than what you're used to doing? Well, if you remember correctly, when we got married and I was working, mm -hmm. I had a, a decent amount of money saved up. You know, we got married 17 years ago, right? Yeah, but the point that I'm making is that I wasn't married. I was working two jobs and I was saving my money. So I know what to do. But because I have you, like, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're my comfort. So I don't have to think that way bethany says i love y'all reminds me so much of me and my husband no and you know what I, honestly like the conversation was just funny when we were laying there last night i was cracking up i said honey why you don't save your money all i see is versace don't start telling my business versace <laughs> um you don't do hermit hermes that often but i see sex that's all i be seeing sex versace amazon Amazon, 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 Amazon. And then you go some custom clothiers in order to get some stuff taken care of and some hats and all of that other kind of junk. And then TikTok apparently be getting your attention. So you be buying stuff on there. And Leslie is becoming the same as you. Yes, TikTok does. They have they show oh so God. many things that you didn't even know that you needed <sighs> that make the life makes your life so much easier i asked leslie yesterday i said where is my card she gonna try to finesse me she gonna give me back my my card yes. my credit card she gonna give me back the credit card and then she gonna say here i don't need it i said okay now nah, erase the apple pay out of your phone and she was like oh jesus she thought she was gonna finesse me nope hey. dad knows all but let's get back into the show um i do want to share an article with you guys because it's some things that I emphasize that you guys need to move like, and it's the way in which I convince y'all to invest your money and it comes into Patreon, right? So um, Warren Buffett is the founder and owner, and if you don't know the, the story of Warren Buffett and how it is that he founded Berkshire Hathaway, but Berkshire Hathaway is one of the most phenomenal investment companies. It's not the ARC from Kathy Wood and all of that other type of stuff. It's different. Do you know that Berkshire Hathaway has had an 1,800% return or gain on the Coca-Cola stock? He bought in the Coca-Cola a long time ago, and he's made over 1,800% return on it. Dang. 
amongst other stock picks. And one of the reasons that he's done it is because he's taken a long term view on his investments. If you are looking to get rich quick, if you are looking to um, make an investment and I'm a day trader all day, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it stupidly. If you're doing it that way, you're overworking and you're not making informed decisions. You need to join the Patreon and look at the things that I look for when I'm looking to invest in a company. We are making 10 and 15 year decisions because we want we plan forever. We plan forever. We not plan for now. We plan for forever. But let's go into the article. So uh, Warren Buffett's Apple wager may be stealing the show this year. So he's invested in Apple for a long time now. But two of the investors, other big positions are paying off. The Berkshire Hathaway CEO has racked up almost 1,800% return. Send a description. 1,800% gain on Coca-Cola stock and tripled his money on Bank of America stock. Now, I'm about to break this down. All right. So we're going to break this down in the lamest terms so you guys can understand what getting to the bag really mean like what it means. Berkshire spent $1.3 billion to amass its $400 million Coca-Cola shares, a position it hasn't touched in 27 years. Let me, re- let, me, let me highlight that part. A position it hasn't touched in 27 years, ladies and gentlemen. We are playing for forever. One of the things that my daughter often asks me because she goes in her portfolio and she says, dad, okay, I see it's growing, it's crazy or whatever, but it don't really mean anything to me. I said, why? She said, well, what are we going to use it for? We said, so we can continue to grow it. We're going to continue to get to the bag. Okay, let me let me go through this. Coca-Cola stock price has climbed 2% this year. Hmm, not much. To a near record high of $61, valuing Berkshire Hathaway's $24.2 billion dollar stock purchase now in it they bought it for 1.3 now it's valued at 24.2 that's a lot of money an almost 19 fold gain buffett who drinks five cans of coke today he said i'm i'm a rock with the product that i rock with (laughs) uh rewarded for his long-term ownership in the stock in other ways for one berkshire steak and coca-cola has grown from 17.8 percent to 9.3 purely due to the beverage giants share buyback over the years. They haven't even touched it. They just did share buybacks and now it increases holdings in it. Okay. Moreover, Berkshire's yearly dividends from Coca-Cola. Check this out. Yearly dividends. If you guys are not a part of the Patreon, I don't know what to do. If you, if you don't even want more for yourself, if the only thing you care about is, is Louis Vuitton and Gucci and Christian Louboutins. And listen, that stuff is awesome. I buy a lot of that stuff too, but I buy it with the profits and the, the, um, the dividend payments that I get as a result of making great investments. Let's go into it. This is, ca- this is cash talk. This is the time that you should really be tuned in. Listen, we, we talk a lot of money. We do entertainment. We do all of that as it relates to marriage, but this is that bag talk. Shout out to the bag chasers and the Patreon. Um, check this out. Moreover, Berkshire's yearly dividends. So dividends are the profits that's being shared as a participant or shareholder in a specific company. So if I own a company, it's just like if I was to own a car wash and after you do the gross and then you do the expenses and then your net and then you divvy up the shares according to how it is that we want to, you know, your ownership stake in it. It's the same thing with dividends for however many shares you have. It goes out and it gets paid accordingly. So check this out. The dividends from Coca-Cola have ballooned from 88 million in 1995 to $672 million last year, meaning the conglomerate makes its money back on the position every two years. So they bought into the company for 1.3 billion. Because the valuation of their shares continue to go up to 24 billion every two years, they make back what their initial investment was because the dividend payment that comes into them. They not, y'all not listening. Y'all not listening. That's a lot of money. They make six hundred and seventy two million dollars by just being an investor in the company is what I'm trying to tell you. 
What I'm trying to tell you is that when you play for forever and you're making informed decisions, we don't care about what GameStop is doing. We don't care about what AMC is doing. We don't care about meme stocks at all. We don't care about day trading. We don't care about options trading. We don't care about giving our money away. We are making informed decisions on how we can continue to get to the bag. And this is a prime example. Now do it on a smaller scale, continue to scale it out and it grows exponentially. When I'm telling you that it snowballs, it snowballs. It's a reason why I was down for 10 years before I started spending any money because I had read this book and I understand how investments work. Anybody that's selling you all of this get rich bull crap, I'm selling you on the idea that you need to be intentional and then this is how we're going to lower our expenses. This is how we play for forever. This is what we look for when we're looking to invest in companies, so on and so forth. We're mining through, looking for information and making 10, 15, 20, 20 year, 30 year bets if you just want to look at it as gambling. Let me continue, yo. They not getting it. They not getting it. Time is the friend of the wonderful business, Buffett wrote about the bet in 2011 shareholder letter. Berkshire originally invested $5 billion in Bank of America in 2011. I love bank stocks. When the Wall Street stalwart was struggling during the U.S. sovereign debt crisis, most recently it plowed $2.1 billion into the lender in the summer of 2020. When things are down, that's the buying opportunity for us, right? 2011 is not that far, remo far removed from 2008. People was spelling doom and gloom to bank stocks. Bank stocks aren't going anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Bank of America's stock price has roughly doubled since the 14-year high of around $49, boosting the value of Berkshire's latest tranche of shares to 4.2 billion. Moreover, Berkshire's total position of 1 billion shares has soared in value to 50.5 billion. The company's total cost base was 14.6, meaning it has more than tripled its money on paper. It's more than tripled the value of its money on paper. Berkshire's Bank of America and Coca-Cola holdings are worth a combined $75 billion today, including about $59 billion in unrealized gains. Do y'all know what that means? Unrealized gains, meaning you don't pay the taxes on it until you sell. And it just continues to become more and more valuable every single day is money making money on top of money. And then it goes on to say it's roughly $120 billion gain on Apple so on and so forth my honey are you interested in investing now it's okay if you say no yes i would like to and that oh that's another thing i mm. did ask you to take what i had in savings and to invest it for me and you said oh it's fine it's no point we already have an investment account together i'm just saying honey I'm always curious about what it is that you're saving for. And I know that it's just a bigger purchase on the horizon. I know that you don't care enough about no investing on, in that level. You just care about having a good time. And that's cool because I've, afforded, I've, I've made that available to you. And I think that you should enjoy your life every single day. Sometimes I just be perplexed. I be talking all this money talking. Rita be like, Rita be like this. She be like, that's nice. Let me see what they doing over here. <laughs> 